Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Hope everybody's having a good day. I'm out actually moving around, running some errands. So I decided to use this time to talk to you. Um, as you guys know, we are uh, in the middle of a fundraiser for Black Man Lead. Honestly, uh, the fundraiser has not fared well, uh, which is typical. Uh, for grassroots organizations that aren't heavily plugged. Uh, if you're not part of the nonprofit industrial complex, uh, which tends to redirect funding to non-critical issues, it's hard to get a grip in here unless you have some type of angle, unless you're doing some type of entertainment. Uh, true substance and things that have been proven to have a statistical difference in the community are hardly ever funded or backed with any real force. Thus, the lack of effective change in the black community. Uh, you're not going to get change in the black community without funding. You're not going to get change in the black community without economic investment and power. It's not going to happen. You're not going to wish it. You're not going to passion it. And I had to learn that the hard way. I had to learn that my passion wasn't enough. I had to learn that no matter how much I believed in it, no matter how hard I worked, that this thing was big enough that it demanded more than just a desire and an intent. It, it demanded a plan. I've produced a plan. It demanded commitment long term. I've given that uh, nearly 30 years of my adult life to it. 20 years, I mean, to the point where it has cost me. Um, and what I can tell you is it requires a collective effort. It requires that. You got to understand there are a bunch of different ways to subtract, to extract money out of the black community. Real, true, grassroots, change-making uh, programs aren't, aren't on the list. The black church, top of the list. Entertainment, second on the list. Um, Nonprofit industrial complex which could be the church, but it's separate from the church. But when it comes out and say, hey man, here's a program that if you, 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 you implement this program, you're gonna reduce incarceration, recidivism, dropout rates, poverty rates, violence in the community, uh, uh, in the black community. This program is that powerful. I have produced so much uh, of the evidence that I've uncovered i produced it in published work. I've lectured on it. I've talked on it. It works. The problem is it's not being heavily implemented. There are some small pockets around the country, uh, some of which I'm responsible for, that we know that the program works. We just need to implement it on a national level with a unified network in place and operating as a support mechanism, but to ensure that we are... Uh, successfully socializing young black boys. Let me explain something to you. The Not only is the violence increasing, and I, I can remember thinking seven, eight years ago, it can't get any worse. Well, it's gotten worse. Not only violence among young black male boys against one another has increased, but violence from young black males uh, against their intimate partners has increased. Intimate partner violence, intimate partner homicide is at an all-time high. The second leading cause of death for black females between the ages of 15 and 44 is intimate partner homicide. Now this means that if we don't find a way to change this thing, that we're literally unleashing our sons on our daughters. And that is not acceptable. But that's not the only thing. We have an issue with mass incarceration. From the age of five, young black males are targeted. I've done uh, a, a report, I've done a position paper on the disproportionality of uh, special education referrals from teachers of young black boys and how it negatively impacts them throughout their school career and how it increases the risk of them becoming alienated by the school system and dropping out of school and how that immediately impacts their risk for being targeted and uh, and ultimately ending up in the penal system. 
where they will be at a higher risk for recidivism, meaning that even after they serve their first term, 75% of them will return. Okay, all of these things can be positively impacted by, first and foremost, socially, I mean, properly socializing young black males. I've talked about this. The Black Man Lead Rite of Passage Initiative is a comprehensive program that's designed to socialize young black men into black manhood. And it's important to make the emphasis of black manhood because black manhood is a unique experience. It's unique from any other form of manhood. It cannot be compared to any form of manhood. It's not even close. And if you're not properly socialized into it, you're going to end up in two places, either acquiesce into a system that does not service your blackness or becoming an enemy of a system and dysfunctional within a system that uh, alienates and targets your blackness. And so what we have to do is prepare them to be functional, to be effective, to be protectors, to be providers, uh, to be lovers of their children, lovers of their women, respecters of their women, respecters of one another, unified together and operating owners of their own businesses, uh, financially astute. All of these things are a part of the preparation, but also as a part of our uh, program, we are approaching another issue that is a problem, and that is the rapid rate in which black young black males are committing suicide. So we're talking mental health as well. So we're talking about a strong focus on mental health, helping black men deal with black uh, with the, with the uh, su struggles of being black, the stigma of seeking help for their mental and emotional issues, uh, 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 creating safe spaces and professional help. And all of this is possible. You can't have what you say you want as a black collective if black men don't heal. It's all a pipe dream if black men don't heal. You can't go out and do all the work that's being done to heal black women if black men don't heal. Because guess what? No matter what you say, you're sending a large pre a pre a predominance of these black sisters to black men who aren't healthy. If you don't heal them together, that's why I love the work that Dr. Uh, v is doing. Um, out on the West Coast, and she's 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 taking it nationally. She's working very hard with sisters, but she's involving men. Why? Because she understands that if we don't, and I think the last thing that she asked me to participate in, and I kind of got caught in a family emergency, could only do a little. Uh, but I'm looking forward to working with her in greater depth. Um, and I think the feeling is mutual. Is she did a program called Healing with Him, and why Healing with Him is important is because if all the women are having access to programs and resources and they're being told they're they're, they're, they're reconstructing their self-image, they're reconstructing their self-worth, their, their self-esteem, their self-confidence, and they're growing, but they're being pushed back into a community where black men haven't healed, it's gonna slowly be unraveled and undone. We have to heal together and we have to understand that we can point the finger at black men all we want to. Black men, you can sit up and pretend ain't nothing wrong. You can act all hard. You can holler, I'm good all you want to. But the truth of the matter is, as James Baldwin said, you cannot be black in this country and be even remotely conscious of what's going on and not be in a state of rage almost all the time. Well, being in a state of rage almost all the time, being on the edge almost all the time comes at a hefty price. We have to be aware of that. We have to work in that. And I am, like I said, if you have followed me, you know that I didn't just pop up on the scene. I've been doing this long before the internet became such a hot spot. I've been doing it. And I've been on YouTube for 12, at least 12, 13, 20, 12, 13 years. Four, almost 14 years. Well, actually 14 years, but seriously, 13 years. And... I, I was 20 years in by the time I got here. I've been doing this work. I've been sitting up and I've researched. We're, look, I'm, I'm 24 books in. Most of that has something to do with our plight as a community. Some of it directly as black males. And almost every book has a part solely focused on what's going on with our black males. Because this is what I'm going to tell you. And I'm going to leave it here. We will never get as high we will never get any higher than our women 
can spiritually lift us and we will never get any further than our man can physically lead us and they have to be operating in conjunction it has to be a unified effort of uh, ma of uh, masculine and feminine energy with a, a concentrated focus on our dynamic roles and how they are unique but definitely uh, necessary and a part of the whole that is what we have to do I am calling on each and every person that watches this video to invest in it um, what I'm going to do is for any person that donates at least $100, I am going to gift you. The $100 is going to go towards Black Man Lead, but I am going to gift you a rapid change breakthrough session from my company, the Visionetics Institute, which is an empowerment, self-improvement uh analytical breakdown of where you are and where you want to go and how to get there and we do it in a power pack session and it's normally $350 but I'm going to gift it to anybody who donates $100 to the Black Man Lee um, Rite of Passage Initiative I'm going to tell you a little funny inside joke which is not that funny to me it's funny in the sense that people literally do it uh, I don't just service uh, black people with my business. I service black people with my programs and my organization, but my businesses are built around generating revenue. And I learned early on, you cannot depend on growing a business solely on the black community. So uh, my businesses are, I'm, I do everything I can to involve the community and put my people first, but the people who recognize what I can do for them and they come and they're honestly looking to be better people, I bring them in and, and that's what I do. But what I can tell you is, the fun, the joke is actually this. I have actually had more white people, not just recently, I'm talking about any time that I make offers where I'm giving away something from my company, I have actually had more white people donate so they could get it for a lesser price than I've had my people donate. But simply because, number one, you're getting something at a discount. Uh, you're getting something for, for free and you're giving something towards something you should automatically be passionate for. But that 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 has always blown my mind that they lurk around and literally they catch videos and, and stuff that I post on my social media accounts where they follow me and they're like, hey, he's doing this. And I look up and I'm going like, this person is this. You know, and I'm like, okay, they gave. You know, and and the thing is, I don't know if they gave because they actually believe in it, or they just gave because they know they were going to get something that was that that they valued at a much lesser price, which is just smart business on their part. But anyway, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that. But we need to take action. So I'm challenging everybody who watches this to give. Um, on that note, I'm. Oh, here's the thing. Over a month and a week ago, almost a month and a half ago. We started this. It was supposed to be a week long. It was supposed to be um, to raise a small amount, relatively speaking, $10,000. When you think about the money that's being moved around on social media for BS, $10,000 is absolutely nothing. Um, I definitely, and I'm not going to get into it, but $10,000 isn't a lot, relatively speaking. Now, I know for the average black person, $10,000 is a lot, but for what's being moved and how things are going and what it costs to make things happen, $10,000 isn't. And with the number of people that's out there, it's well within reach without anybody having to hurt their pocketbook. Matter of fact, there's a person out there that literally could write a check or send the money or do however they want to do it and could actually meet that challenge by themselves. And they're out there because they're, it, it, they're, they're out there because they're balling out of control on social media every day, talking about the stuff they're buying that does nothing for the community and whatever. And some of them are actively involved. I don't want to say that. But we started this then. It was supposed to be a week long. And sad to say that we are six weeks in. Well, not six weeks in, a week, almost six weeks, a week, a month, a week, over a week, almost six weeks in. And we just got to 500. And to the people that help us get, get there, I do thank you. And I think a couple of people actually donated $100. I will be contacting you to schedule your uh, rapid change uh, breakthrough session. 
and that's all I'm gonna do now. I gotta get out. I've got some things to get done, and I'm sort of on a time uh, uh, time schedule. So look, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day.